This is Hall of Famer Marshall Falk, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in! The Fantasy Footballers back with you Thursday, April 30th. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. NFC winners and losers on today's show. I'm going to talk some news. A couple exciting announcements. How are you two fine, quarantined gentlemen doing i'm doing excellent how about you mike i'm doing all right the my, my draft buzz is definitely wearing off a, a little bit You're coming so gonna, down off the draft i i am so i'm very excited for the show because yeah. as we talk through the winners and the i guess the losers as we have dubbed them i don't know maybe i can maybe i can get a little bit more of that juice flowing through my bod yeah no i mean it, it's been a very fun week of nfl chatter and then that's been combined by some rookie drafts that we've been mm-hmm. a part of yeah my rookie man maybe that's where i'm uh, i'm like i'm on my rookie draft hangover they're done i've got my guys and now i have to wait forever <laughs> to see if they pay off <laughs> well I, not everybody does that that's actually one of the questions we get a lot is when do i when do you know when should your league do a rookie draft should and it be advice, a part of the big startup draft and those type of things? Yeah, the advice we always give is that it has to come after at least you, you cannot do your rookie drafts or, or or even your startup drafts until after the NFL draft. But that advice to us means that as soon as the NFL draft is over, we're like, <laughs> let's go. So not everybody does it this quick, which to be fair, I think a lot of leagues probably want more time. They want to be able to listen to shows like this the week after, get the takes on the rookies. So if you haven't had your rookie draft yet, or you don't even play in Dynasty, you know, you're new to the show and you're uh, just wanting to have information on rookies, this this is a great primer. And we've already been through our rookie draft, so we're we're good to go. It's it's probably better to wait on your rookie draft because things in August look a lot different than they do right now. Like even as confident as we are in certain players right now, I'm sure August will shake up some depth charts and, and guys will move around. But uh, uh, this this is as long as I can wait. Yeah, the, let's the be draft honest. Is done. In in our leagues, I mean, we do this professionally. This is our full time gig for you know half a decade now. Um, we kind of want to get this thing going before all the, <laughs> all the league mates have a chance to yes, catch up. Yes, we do. It's, I am not lying. Like, if we could get this up before our ultimate draft kit rankings are up, that's great. Give me yeah, who we, I want. We do kind of force the rookie draft to start on Sunday. Before because, you release your rookie rankings, because Mike. Because the rookie rankings are coming out on Monday. Like, you, you buttholes aren't getting this. <laughs> I was going to say one of the other things that is really fun in our main league of record is we have a three keeper league and every year the way our keeper format is some people uh, I think like hearing about this format and we have a franchise player that you select and then we have three keepers that go into a keeper lottery for that team and only two of those three get selected to stay on your team. So we have a big fun league event uh, we did it this year live on uh, Zoom, and everyone go- was there. How'd it go for you, Andy? <laughs> this was the first time I've actually <laughs> just taken it on the chin. I took it, the rules for our league is you have the ability to franchise a player, but you cannot put any player of a di- of that same position into your keeper lottery. So this year, against, I mean, I was down to the wire saying, "Do I franchise Joe Mixon?" And then have a keeper lottery of Mahomes and Woods yes. and Debo Samuel. Yeah, often or, the decision you make is, do I make sure I have my best player? Yes. Or do I do I spin the wheel Risk and, and see that I can get the best possible keepers as a group? And I took the chance this year. I franchised Mahomes. I have a bunch of picks. And I said, let's throw Mixon into the keeper lottery with David Montgomery and Robert Woods. 
And look, this was not an easy decision. I when it, you know, it's not easy if I go to Twitter with the question. <laughs> like that's not a good <laughs> outcome for a situation. And I went to Twitter. I explained it. The vote came in on the Mahomes side. I'm like, ah, it's only a one third chance of losing Mixon. I'll be fine. I'm fine every year when I take this chance. And I finally, <laughs> my luck ran out, and it was yeah. inevitable at one point in time. You know, for it to do that, but unfor- you know, Jason's happy. He's in my division. I lose I'm, Joe Mixon. I love Joe Mixon too, and you guys know that. And it makes me so sad now. My only hope won't. is that he gets to pick eight. Where my I only am. hope is that he holds out now because I don't care anymore. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Just hold out and make me happy. But uh, hey, big news! We've had our ultimate draft kit uh, prize pack winner selection. So. I want to announce those winners. Kevin W, you are the winner of the Listener League spot in our Congratulations, Kevin W. Yeah, Listener League winner. Uh, Emails have gone out to these people. So if you are another Kevin W but didn't get an email, you lost. This is a winners and losers show. And unfortunately, (laughs) (laughs) there was only one spot. Um, Jesus M., won the video draft review. Ben S. won the Julian Edelman jersey. And William D., that must be Defoe, William Defoe? That is correct. Oh, that no, is that's William Willem, Defoe. huh? Uh, Devontae Adams' <laughs> mini helmet. That's, that's right. It is Willem, not It's um, Willem, right? Yes. It, it is. I'm just These I'm actors taking letters out of normal names. I'm and, glad I didn't chime in because you looked the fool. <laughs> When I said William. Don't know Willem Dafoe. I corrected pretty Legendary quickly. Legendary Hollywood hunk. <laughs> I don't sure. know about the hunk part. The hunk part. <laughs> Mike, you jumped the shark on that one. I like alliteration. Look, it, Willem Dafoe is one of the most gifable people of all time. Like His, his reaction, reaction gifts are, where yeah. his eyes are going insane. Yes, those yes. are fantastic. He's terrifying. Twitter, at the FF Ballers. You can follow the show. All the latest going on in uh, Footballer's World. YouTube, you can find us at youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell. We like to go live with some uh, special events on there, and then the episodes are on there, highlights are on there. And I did want to say this at the top of the show. We've got buy-sell we're going to get into, answer some questions here in Dynasty. We'll do some Dynasty buy-sell. But I just want to say thank you to all of the supporters who joined the foot.com. Yes. Um, This is a difficult, strange time for our country. This is a difficult time for a lot of people financially, uh, their jobs, all of the things that people are facing. And what's interesting, too, is like this show and podcasts in general are very much a part of routines in people's lives. And a lot of those routines are the commute to and from work and we're all at home. But I don't know. I've just been personally humbled and blown away by the people that have come and supported our little business and our employees and our people supporting the show over there. Just genuinely thank you for uh, all that you've done for this podcast over the last five years. I uh, the mesmerized Clan is undefeated in every which way and and just so you really are the awesome best people. people. Yeah, you you really are. So I am I'm just blown away. Really appreciate it. I know I speak for all of us when I say that. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right. I thought this would be fun. We're going to do a five-pack of Buy or Sell Dynasty Edition. I'm glad you picked a bunch of easy names. I was going to say, you don't get to linger very long here, Mike, because we've got to get into the NFC winners and losers. So this is a quick reaction, uh, some insight, and then we'll move on. But uh, we're doing Buy or Sell Dynasty Edition. The NFL draft just happened. Aaron Jones. Oh, Buying or selling is... <laughs> Aaron Jones. So I, w- I was brutal. already selling Aaron Jones because of his touchdown numbers and I, the you know not believing that he will repeat as well as he did this last year. He was the running back three in half-point scoring format. So I was already a sell. Now they spend a day to pick on A.J. Dillon. Um, questions about whether you know they'll resign him long term. I do. I know you two do not think that they'll sign him to a big contract. I think Aaron Jones will get paid and will get kept. But I, I'm definitely a sell on on Aaron Jones. Interesting. So if you think th- th- that's tough for me to to put together, the reason so if you believe he's he'll a be sell back, for me, yeah, that's you, why he's a yeah, sell that's for strange. me. 
is I don't think he will be back. And we've just seen it too many times now. The market for free agent running back, you don't buy into it. Don't 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 gamble on that. Like the big money contracts don't exist anymore. Teams are getting savvier and just replacing that position in the draft. So that that's why he's a sell to me. So I think it's interesting that you think he will be back with Green Bay, but you still want to sell. Is that just because of you? You think he's at peak value? It, exactly. I mean, it, it's irrelevant. If he had if he had a four year contract right now, I would say he's a sell to me because I think his value from last year won't be repeated, especially considering the fact that where his value came from was touchdown dependent. And AJ Dillon, that's kind of at least the projection of be. his NFL yeah. career as that giant, you know, two hundred and forty pound bruising goal line guy. If I knew he was back in Green Bay, he'd be a buy for me. He's 25 years old, and I think the identity of that team is going to be running the football. I think that's what they want to do, but I don't think he's back, so I'll sell it. Keenan Allen, buy, sell, Dynasty Edition, 28 years old. Herbert at quarterback, most likely, for uh, some part of this season. I know I said earlier in the offseason that I thought Herbert would win the job out of camp. I'm going to partially retract that prediction. Because okay. I don't know what camp's going to look like. So That's if fair. there's not a lot of time, then Herbert may not have the time to establish himself the way a normal offseason would go. That being said, okay, Keenan gets Tyrod. Keenan gets Herbert. Keenan gets some combination of not Phillip Rivers. And, you know, he's been okay. But you look back to last year, weeks five on, wide receiver 27. With Philip Rivers, yeah, Keenan Allen is also a sell to me. Uh, I'm looking at this list, and um, he, he's a guy that I wasn't super high on. I don't think Tyrod or Herbert. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I was kind of anti Herbert in the scouting phase. Um, so I just, I just don't believe that he is going to get the volume and the accuracy that he's had, and that takes a lot for me to speak uh, fondly of Philip Rivers. I. <laughs> that the, the how reason, much were you paid? <laughs> your your guys's stance. That's why Keenan Allen is a buy to me right now. I feel like the dynasty the value community is, so low. is just soured on a guy who, yes, he was the wide receiver twenty seven from weeks five on, but finished as the wide receiver eight, wide receiver twelve, wide receiver three. The two years before this, I, I Keenan Allen is a is a great wide receiver. So I'm just going to buy into the talent of Allen, hope that Herbert is good enough. Uh, meanwhile, while everyone out there is like, ah, I, I got to get Keenan on off my team. If I can pick him up for, for, for something that relatively cheap, then, then I'll buy. Yeah. You bring up a good point that you're, you're buying into the talent. Cause I don't think any of the three of us think Keenan, Keenan Allen has lost anything or isn't a, a great route runner. Isn't a great receiver. He, he is very good. So if you, if you can buy him low, I mean, that's all of these buy sells are, relative to you know the, the well, you, value you're getting back you've seen uh alan robinson's talent win out fantasy production wise despite bad quarterback play so there are those players that can do it well the, the keenan seen, allen thing too is also like as of last year i think people were still concerned that keenan allen just could never be healthy because you had those uh those two seasons where he played half then he played one game but since that time he's appeared in every single game all right tyler lockett Tyler Lockett buy sell. I man, I think I'm trying to move Tyler Lockett if I can. I, Interesting. Uh, he's obviously a valuable piece of this team, a low passing volume situation. I think DK Metcalf is legitimate and will continue to ascend in this league. And so Lockett will have his big games, but I don't know if I want to lean on him. So I'll go ahead and sell. I'm going to buy. I'm not buying him as a foundational piece of my team, but I, I think that Metcalf is legit. But Would you I rather have that, Lockett or Keenan Allen in a dynasty league today? Oh, that's a oof. that's a fascinating question. I think it's still Keenan Allen just because of the possible outcome of him still being the one where Lockett and Metcalf will split, and that split will become more and more even. And uh, Honestly, the split could favor DK Metcalf sooner than later, but 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 I still think Lockett has his value, but much very very similar to Russell Wilson. I know what I'm getting into. I'm I don't think I'm getting into a weekly consistent or a, a consistently high producer 
on a week-to-week basis. That's why he's not the foundation of my team. But if he's like the third wide receiver or my flex or something like that, then I'm buying. Yeah, to, to me, I still think Tyler Lockett is a good receiver with a great quarterback. But when I made my dynasty rankings this last week, I had DK Metcalf. I, like if I if I have to choose Metcalf or Lockett on that own team, I'm taking Metcalf higher. He he's younger, and I think his his ceiling is higher going forward. Uh, so I you know to me Tyler Lockett's a hold. But if we have to say buy or sell, I would be selling him because I think he's going to turn into the two. <laughs> uh, Mike and I were just a little bit distracted. We thought. We thought you were saying he had a very nice quarterback butt. Yeah, Russ. That's what I was saying. Russell Wilson. He has a very <laughs> nice quarterback butt. Got his juicy booty. You know, um, it's, it's I guess thick. that's possible. I don't know as well as <laughs> you're more the be the more right. the expert in that department. Yeah, you got um, to get a peak ski of that that Wilson derriere. <laughs> Powerful. That's a, that's a famous quote. Now, um, <laughs> Juju Smith Schuster. Probably one of the more <laughs> polarizing decisions for fantasy owners to make. In fact, when I have done some exploratory trade offers in a number of leagues, Juju is the player that I don't know what people actually think about him when I approach for that trade. I don't know if you are still in. I don't know if you're trying to get out of Juju. And so, you know, for me, I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy the fact that a player at his age, put up a 1,400-plus yard season, that's not easy to do. I don't care if you have Antonio Brown on the other side of the field. I don't care if you're in a very conducive offense. That is not normal. You don't put up 1,400-plus yards in the NFL. At his age, if people are going to downgrade him in dynasty considerably, which is what I have seen in dynasty startup rankings, where this guy was, what, a top three pick last year? Yes. Yeah, he was so, creeping up to be the the overall number one wide receiver. What I I don't know exactly what rankings you're looking at, but I think he's down in the low teens now. Yeah, he, he maybe tumbled. lower. Yes. So I'm going to buy him because regardless of what happens with uh, his contract with Big Ben, I believe that the talent of Juju is better than the value right now in Dynasty. I'm I'm right there with you, Andy. I, it's tough. There's you know the rumors floating of will they not even extend him? They draft Chase Claypool, but I'm going with the talent. I mean, I I I still believe Juju is extremely talented. You know, Deontay Johnson looks like the real deal. Um, but Juju, I believe, I want to vet this because it seems impossible, is still younger than Deontay Johnson. Um, Juju <laughs> is such a young wide receiver who's already had two dominant he's still younger <laughs> yes he has always he has always been i, I will i will vet he that as we go he along. was older last year yeah he just got younger, younger this year. well he took a year off last year because they lost the quarterback so he's like pause life um but yeah i mean look he's super talented if big ben comes back i i, I think he is a buy okay i'm gonna buy to evan ingram tight end new york giants all the talent all the entries in the world what do we think? Buy, sell, Dynasty League. Uh, I, I I feel like the eternal optimist right now, which is a little strange to live in this land, but I'm going to buy him for the reasons you said. In eight games, he was the tight end seven in points per game, was the tight end seven in points per game the year before that, and had the rookie breakout year. He, he hasn't been able to stay on the field, but like I just mentioned for Keenan Allen, that he had two years in a row where – he was written off as this dude's just going to be hurt his entire career. Daniel Jones looks like a stable franchise quarterback who was going to Evan Ingram. So I will buy because there just there aren't many tight ends that can be the focal part of their offense. I'm out. I'm out on Evan Ingram. Uh, if I get at best tight end seven in points per game and I get the injury concerns, I'm out. Yeah, the the injury concerns are there. I I would sell him. I think he still ha- I think he can net you good value and I I do. I worry just like the Giants do of whether or not um whether or not he's he's going to be on the field and be able to help me and he, you know, because when he's been on the field he's been good. I think he'll still carry value. I don't think he's like a super buy low candidate right now. So, while he's not at peak value, I I'm I'm willing to sell him. Also, I have vetted uh, the the date of birth 
for okay. Juju and fluctuating Deion. date of births. The, yeah, and according to today, <laughs> Juju Smith-Schuster is still younger than their okay. rookie last season, Deontay Johnson. So we'll see what happens with those ages moving forward. Right, was, we'll check back in next player year. That had the the weird birth. Oh, was it Cameron oh, Artis Payne? Yeah, yes. Cameron Artis Payne got way older over time. <laughs> yeah, a couple years in, it came out that he, his birthday was wrong on everything. It's like, oh, he's it's ridiculous. All right, we have some news to talk about. We'll get into the NFC winners and losers. Want to thank great friends of the show, great friends of uh, this time of life as well, and that's Omaha Steaks. We're all staying home, and there's never been a better time to stock up on Omaha Steaks than right now. We're talking the world's best steaks, a huge variety of family favorites without leaving your home. This is a great care package for somebody you love as well. If you know, if you've got a friend, you got a family member, and then a big box of meat shows up delivered to them, they're gonna mm. love you a little bit friendship more. Friendship elevated, yeah. Friendship upgraded. Omaha Steaks delivers quality. Uh, everything is safely packed. And uh, as you're st uh, stocking up on the things you need, don't forget all of the different foods that you love. Steaks, chicken, pork, burgers. Mm, 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 mm. Right now, the Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sales available for our listeners to help your family stock up on the food you love. Go to omahasteaks.com. And here's the what you got to remember. Type footballers in the search bar. and You can save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. They are also partnering Omaha Steaks is partnering with Feeding America to help feed families in need. They've already donated 100,000 servings of premium proteins. And when you buy select combo packages, they will donate more. So go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar, and help support Feeding America. All right. Uh, one bit of news. We'll touch it quickly, and then we'll move on to the NFC winners and losers. Taysom Hill, uh, weapon of the New Orleans Saints, recently signed for a $16 million guaranteed contract. Uh, I think it was a $19 million deal. But he has been made tight end and flex eligible in ESPN. He's The quarterback mm. designation has been removed. Mm. He is now tight end flex eligible. So quick reaction to that news. I know Sleeper has not done it yet. So we can all have, I, we may have different opinions on this. I believe this was the right move by ESPN. I believe it reflects the utility of Taysom Hill. He is, what, throwing the ball seven times as a professional athlete. He has been involved in the passing game. He blocks like a tight end. This is the right move to me. And so yeah, I, I, think I think it's, it's a good call. I think it's a fine call. I just don't care. Uh, you know, he's not going to be someone I draft to play. Maybe, you know, Andy, in your situation, we're in a deeper dynasty league where you've got tight end problems. That's a situation where maybe in a pinch you could play Taysom Hill, but it's not going to be a relevant player for most people. So I, 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 whatever. I think that can change. I think that can change like it we might. saw towards the back half of last year. And you are going to benefit in the tight end position of his passing work if he gets an opportunity to throw the football. Do you think sleepers should make the change? Other platforms like Yahoo should make the change, Mike? I think the the change should be made. When when a guy has what, we had twenty two targets and he threw the ball six times? Like yeah. he's not he's he's not being played as a quarterback. I get that his his designation by the team is that, but we play it walks a, like a duck and it quacks like a duck. <laughs> right. Like we, we a play duck. a silly game based on another game. It's it's okay if we change some things around on our side, but I'm I'm with Jason that I mostly don't care. I don't see him working his way up to being a player where you're like, I'm starting Taysom Hill every single week as well, a they tight just, end. They did just move uh they they signed Jameis Winston and they paid Taysom Hill. So they don't have the flexibility issues about Taysom Hill being the backup and not being able to be used as much. So right. there's the possibility a snap count goes up. Um, Lynn Bowden, number 80 overall pick from the Raiders, has been designated as a running back. Is that correct? That That is you correct. You want to mention so if, that, Mike? Yeah, well, because people are doing their rookie drafts. When he was picked, he was kind of a similar real Swiss Army knife type of guy where you're like, are they going to make him a RB, wide receiver, quarterback? What are they going to do with Lynn Bowden? But So now you know he will be uh, categorized as, as their third string running back. All right, let's get into the NFC winners and losers. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right, 
let's start in the NFC West. The San Francisco 49ers, they spent a first-round pick on Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State, wide receiver. Ayuk! Lots of wide receivers to choose from in this draft. In my opinion, and as a Cardinals fan, I'm annoyed by it, but I of the ones that they needed to pick, a little strange that they didn't jump at C.D. Lamb early, and they traded down. So I guess in that sense, I'm happy. But Brandon Ayuk, where they got him, the player that he is, the average depth of target of Jimmy Garoppolo, it's a perfect fit to me. Who's the winner? Who's the loser in this offense based on their draft selection? I think uh, the winners, you know, Mostert is actually a winner. In the draft, they decided to uh, trade Matt Burita. Now, granted, they also have Jarek McKinnon. And, yeah, McKinnon's still around. My, my name is Jeff. I mean, the, Tevin Coleman. It's a giant group, but getting Burita out of there, I think, helps – uh, Moster and Tevin Coleman the most. Out, outside of that, I mean, I don't, I don't see Debo as a winner or a loser. This was fine. You knew they were going to pick up another wide receiver in this draft. Uh, it's a good landing spot for Ayuk. Um, it, you know, I, I think uh, you could argue that Jimmy Garoppolo gets, you know, gets a touch sure. up because they drafted a first round wide receiver that he doesn't really have to throw the ball very far for. Right, it is perfect for him. It, right, he's like a CD Lamb type in the sense that just so great after the catch, and that's what the the Niners want. They they want that ball to either be handed to someone or <laughs> or, or virtually thrown, handed to or them. virtually <laughs> handed to someone. Uh, Brooks, do you want to say? I mean, do you want to say anything about Dante Pettis right now? I know that I really don't. You do. You really don't. Are you willing to? Are you writing a goodbye letter? Are you still on Team Pettis? If I have him in a dynasty league, which of course I do, he's he's hanging out on my bench. He's him still there. Would you rather have Jalen Hurd, who's now recovered, or Dante Pettis on on your bench in a dynasty? I'll league? stick with Pettis in that case. I take Hurd. Yeah, yeah. All right. I will say well, this: I have Dante Pettis on on you know Mike and I. We co-own a team, and we we're looking at drops, and he's he's still on our team after this. But obviously, you know. We'd love to replace Not him. on purpose. <laughs> yeah. We looked right. and he was just still there. By yeah. the way, I, I agree with you, Jason. I think the Mostert, Mostert's a winner. It gives me more confidence to acquire him in leagues, knowing that, look, McKinnon has to overcome a lot to come back and have a big role. Jeff Wilson has a, a limited role. Mostert and Coleman are going to be the two that are if, the focus of this offense in the running game. And that's... Enjoy it. It's a lot of handoffs. So, mm. uh, Seattle... The Seahawks, what do we think of this draft? You got any winners and losers? I mean, they didn't replace. I think the big storyline with Seattle is that they did not draft a running back. It high. should say something. It, yes, correct. They did not high. draft I mean, one the, high. Fourth round pick, DJ Dallas. Round, yeah, yeah. They got D, yeah, they got DJ Dallas and a DJ Dallas. Well, I really Dallas. feel like should have gone to the Cowboys. Just, For sure. Mm, that's a rule. Mm, but, I see. I, yeah. I see what you Should have happened with Goddard, too, but... You know, yeah, the, the NFL has no respect for the Cowboys. <laughs> the like Dallas becomes a, an interesting third round rookie pick because like Rashad Penny s- is hoping he's ready to go in September. Chris Carson might be ready come training camp. I, I, I agree with you guys that the that team has is to make showing you feel confident in Carson's yes, return. The team is showing confidence, but this is also a team that when if a player shows up, they don't care about their Per, their draft pedigree, they don't care how much a player is getting paid if they are the better player and they're ready to go. Like So so I'm saying, Chris Carson, yes, I have some more confidence that he should be ready to go, but if all of a sudden week one shows up and DJ Dallas is the starter of this team, it won't, it won't shock me. That would shock me. That would shock me as well. Mm. All right, the Rams, Cam Akers, their first selection in the NFL draft running back out of Florida State jumped off the screen to me as as one of my favorite running backs in this rookie class has a great opportunity here coming into Los Angeles um you know the loser on that side of the equation is Daryl Henderson somebody that we also liked coming out of college last year didn't establish himself last year behind Gurley so it it, it looks like a little bit of a two three-headed monster heading into 2020 I believe Akers has the um, ability to carve out a, a, a large share of this offense at some point in time. What was your reaction to them going running back so early? 
Yeah, it was it was indicative of what they believe they have in their current group because you know a lot of people wanted them to go forward with uh, Malcolm Brown and uh, Darnell Anderson, uh, aka <laughs> Daryl Henderson. Um, you know who they Mike's traded up for nickname. last year in the third, and you wanted <laughs> Darnell. You know, he was a guy you we have liked. To, you have to say it like that, and then it's funnier, Mike. <laughs> but if you look at what the Rams did last year. In the season, they had every opportunity to give Daryl Henderson a uh, run. He he was forced into that role for a small time, and as soon as they could take him out, they did. Now, a second-round pick on Cam Akers, who they took over. J.K. Dobbins was still available, you know, who had more hype and more production coming in. Um, plus, you have the fact that Cam Akers in college was able to be um, successful with a terrible offensive line, and that's the situation he's going to find himself in in the NFL with these Rams and their uh, decrepit offensive line. Where where was uh, was Henderson a third round pick last year? Yeah, yes, they okay. traded up into the third for Henderson. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah it's going to be interesting. Gonna, I'm not going to bury the guys who were who are already on the depth chart in, of Brown and and Anderson, uh, <laughs> but but. Uh, it like I'm I'm very torn what to do with Cam Akers because the draft capital is there, but I think they may have learned a lesson with what happened to Todd Gurley. So I I I'm still drafting Akers very high from a workload in, perspective yeah. in terms of not wanting one guy to do it. Yes, and finding out what happens <clears throat> to your team when you're when everything is based off of one player. So I'm I'm still taking him high in in rookie drafts. But I'm I'm concerned that he'll be part of a three uh, a three running back timeshare. Yeah, I, th I think he'll be the lead dog of a timeshare this year for a team that has Maybe. the most yeah. vacated uh, uh, rush attempts in, in the league. So it's, it, he finds himself in a good situation. And I just I, love Cam Akers. I love yeah, the player. He's, I think he, he's a, a hyper talented player. Absolutely, and he could catch the ball. He could do everything they want. And Van Jefferson uh, needs to be thrown out there as well because he's a guy that. I mean, Wide drafted receiver, over third round pick. Yeah, drafted second over, round pick. Sorry, second um, round pick. You know, Denzel Mims, and you know they they took the guys they wanted, not who they're supposed to have taken with those picks. Um, and that usually means that that a team is you know very very into that player. And you've got a team here that has already supported three wide receivers before Brandon Cooks now leaving. So I've seen him falling late in the third round of some rookie drafts. And I just think he's got good value. Um, you know, it was kind of like Deontay Johnson last year. Uh, wasn't a pre-hyped guy. And the, the Steelers surprised people taking him where they did. And turns out he was good. Yeah, I, do, I don't know what to do with Van Jefferson in, in rookie drafts because I, I buy into him because the Rams bought into him. And, and that seems to be the only reason why. Yeah, I mean, second round pick, that's great capital. Lost Brandon Cooks. Uh, they add another wide receiver. Uh, Josh Reynolds has been involved in the past. Both tight ends have been involved in the past. It's hard to find immediate value there, but the draft capital says you got to look at him in rookie drafts. Arizona, the Cardinals, uh, they did not go CeeDee Lamb with the eighth pick because Isaiah Simmons was still on the board. So they picked up a, uh, a tackle in the third round, Josh Jones, that had been literally even up to a week before the draft graded as a first round tackle try to get some help for kyler bad offensive line last year outside of that skill position wise they only took i mean they took you know benjamin in the seventh round it's irrelevant yeah. for fantasy purposes Kenyon yeah, drake's the guy yeah there's no winners or losers from the draft unless you're including deandre hopkins as that second round pick in which case kyler murray is kyler's a big winner, winner. <laughs> uh, outside of that it, you know <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Out, outside it's a good of that, second round pick. That's all I'm going to say. You know, they, they tried to stock up on defense, which they needed, so not, not much to cover here for fantasy. All right, more to cover here. The Philadelphia Eagles sliding over to the NFC East. We have Jalen Rager going in the first round, pick 21 overall. A, a new weapon for Carson Wentz. Reactions to the fit. Jason, I know we've kind of talked about this. I guess it was on the, the draft reaction live stream. But you mentioned before the draft, you're a big fan of Jalen Rager. Uh, do you believe in the redraft value of him walking right into this uh, wide receiver core? Yeah, I, I think he, I think he can walk in and and have a good rookie season. 
Um, usually rookie wide receivers, they're going to be more of the back half of the year. So it's not necessarily a guy that you want to draft, but can still have success in redraft leagues. Um, I'm a huge, uh, Jalen Rager believer. He was my, f- uh, fourth wide receiver on my board after the, the three first guys that went off in the, uh, NFL draft. And, uh, you know, I comped him, uh, his upside comp to me is like a Steve Smith. So coming into a position with, Carson Wentz, I think, is wonderful. You have to have a big loser, a huge loser here is Deshaun Jackson because, you know, Deshaun Jackson It feels like it had more to it than just our show title. Yeah. uh, You know, they went out and they got speed. I mean, they got, you know, they, they, they traded for Marquise Goodwin. Uh, They drafted Quez Watkins and uh, Jalen Rager. These are all speedsters. And so the aging older injured Deshaun Jackson he he's not the Eagles plan i don't think for 2020 mike what Uh-oh. are you doing what are you, what are you doing with mr miles sanders they had so many oh, draft it's, picks they did not go running back it's what happens to your narrative tough. of uh workhorse back in philadelphia when they didn't draft well Bo- boston scott will still be there and still be a thorn in your butt cheeks uh, every Uh-oh. once in a while but it, it's hard to not get excited that that Miles Sanders can be what he was over the second half of the year and what he was was a he finished in the top 20 what, four uh, four of those seven weeks was top, top 7 10, yeah, three of three them times, like, yeah. like Miles Sanders turned into a fantasy monster at the end of the year it, it ended with a with a sputtering cloud that week 17 when Boston Scott had a monster week but the confidence in Miles Sanders of 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 having the three person the, the normal Eagles three-person running back timeshare where it's impossible to buy in. Now it's just two with Miles Sanders being the primary guy. So you, you got to be very interested in Miles Sanders. Yeah, uh, I mean, I he is the biggest winner for the Eagles. He feels like your biggest winner of the draft. <laughs> like, yeah, he very well might be the biggest winner in fantasy of the draft. His rookie season was comparable to Christian McCaffrey's rookie season. I'm not saying he's going to take that leap, but I, I will say this. We, uh, you know, usually undrafted. My dynasty team would like him to make that leap. <laughs> I'll bet. Everybody's <laughs> I would like dynasty to formally team requested. it. <laughs> um, but one thing I want to point out for rookie drafts, uh, for your dynasty leagues, and also for this conversation on Miles Sanders, I don't usually give two craps about un, uh, you know undrafted free agents but Michael Warren uh he is a running back that that a lot of Eagles people I was live with Eagles people during uh those last days in the draft they were expecting him to be drafted in the the fifth round the sixth round he, like I, I'm surprised they're not taking him and as, as the second that draft was over he was signed as an undrafted free agent with the Eagles, he was a guy that they liked, and they did bring him in. So he's a big, you know, two hundred twenty-six pound uh, touchdown machine in college. Um, so they did address it, but obviously not with draft capital. So I'm just throwing that out there for you. Want to you want to try to sign a Philip uh, Lindsay in on waivers even after your rookie draft goes? Michael Warren's a name you should be aware of. All right, we're going to transition from maybe the biggest winner, Miles Sanders, to maybe the biggest loser, and that means we're flying over to the Dallas Cowboys, and we're going to talk about winners and losers from that draft. They drafted CeeDee Lamb, uh, our favorite wide receiver, first-round pick out of Oklahoma, and Michael Gallup may be the biggest loser of this NFL draft situation because Gallup was clearly an ascending talent. The 113 target number uh, last year was great, especially you know Cooper was a little bit banged up, but you saw Gallup really take the next step. It's going to be very difficult for fantasy owners to value Michael Gallup when Amari Cooper was handed the bag of money. He's there at least a couple more years under that contract. And then, you know, they invest a first round pick on a player that we know is very talented in CeeDee Lamb. So weapon wise, is Gallup the fourth option, the third option on this offense? And does that dissuade you from where you had him before this this took place he's definitely a a a big loser from being able to step into a dominant 1a 1b role which i think a lot of people were hoping uh he did this year now the the pie is split but we we should know because originally i saw cd lamb as a big loser um as well coming into the you know that draft pick 
where you've already got two great options, but the Dallas Cowboys have the third most vacated targets. You know, the having having Witten leave, like having Cobb, Cobb leave. and Witten. Yeah. yeah. Um there are targets to go around and you have McCarthy here, um, who had a history of having those three wide receiver sets, four wide receiver sets. So it, it might not be the worst landing spot for CD Lamb, uh, but it's certainly not great for Gallup's upside. And it's wonderful for Dak. Dak is one of the biggest winners yes. in the draft. Yeah, I'm Dak, so excited for win. Dak this year. Like I'm, I'm not out on Michael Gallup. Uh, like I, like I'm especially if you're saying is he the fourth option this year. I'm not going to put Ceedee Lamb over Michael Gallup in his rookie year. Like I, I'll, I, no, I, sure, I wouldn't I'll, do that either. But Ceedee Lamb behind Gallup versus Randall Cobb behind Gallup is a different story. Sure, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a different picture, but. You know, when when a guy puts up 1,100 yards in 14 games and is going in, this is the third year. If am I remembering that right? For it is Gallup? his third year. Yeah, like I'm st I'm still in on the on the talent but of Michael let me, Gallup. Let's uh, let's let Ceedee Lamb prove that he w is is enough of a force to take that many targets away. But let me ask you a simple question because it it, it will define looking at Michael Gallup this year differently. Are you projecting better numbers than last year for Michael Gallup or worse numbers this year hmm. for Michael Gallup? Because you just read him out, right? He had 113 yeah, so he, targets. He was, he was 1,106 last year. Oh. Is it a better or worse fantasy season for him? Man. I'm yeah, going to take the under. It's probably a, a good, worse season. <laughs> You know what I mean? I like he'll have a he can no, have a, I don't know what you mean. He means if that he has a thousand a yards season, and five touchdowns, season. exactly. That's still taking hmm. the under on what he did his his sophomore year. That's only fourteen games. Yeah, Amari Amari missed how many? Well, he uh, was on the mentally, field mentally, not just physically, <laughs> but not there for several. He was a decoy for a handful of those games. Mike, you didn't make a selection. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I thought we were just moving. Uh, I. Look, man, I'll I'll buy. I'll take the over. Okay. Uh, so you you don't agree with the biggest loser of the draft situation there? Then I do not know. Uh, the New York Giants they end up going Andrew Thomas with the fourth overall pick. Get Daniel Jones some protection. I think that makes Daniel Jones a winner whenever he can stay upright and maybe be less turnover prone. They also took fact, a, they a, went, a tackle they again three. in the third round. Yeah, and a three guard line in, the fifth. In, in in the first five rounds. The, the winners are. Uh, Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Uh, not not just stopping there. I mean, the winners is this wide receiver core. You talk about Ster Sterling Shepard, uh, Golden Tate, and uh, why, why am I blanking on? Uh, you I want to say Slayton? Darius Slayton? Slay. There we go, Slayton. Mm -hmm. Um, I, those are those are huge winners to me in this draft. They they had a ton of opportunity in a deep wide receiver draft to. Uh, say maybe we want to replace someone maybe our core is not good enough and they're they are fine with this set of wide receivers Slayton to me was a clear winner yeah yeah absolutely the Washington Redskins Antonio Gibson third round wide receiver out of Memphis also maybe went, running back yeah 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 they went Antonio Gandy Golden in the fourth round as well out of Liberty winners and losers on this team I mean McLaurin is a winner to me because there was some fear that the Redskins, after the Mari Cooper rumors, might invest a high draft capital selection on somebody that could influences influence McLaurin's role as the one on the outside. Gibson's not going to do that. Well, Gibson Gibson is going to be like an Austin Eckler. I think that he, I know they right there. It says wide receiver. But he at least tweeted out a picture of him, and he was wearing a twenty-four. Like he, I think, is going to be used more as a running back. Like if you if you go watch Ron Rivera talk about him, the the first player out of his mouth when he's talking about Antonio Gibson is comping him to Christian McCaffrey and that skill set. So he's going to be used more as well, a running no back Chris than a Thompson wide receiver there anymore. And that's what I mean. This, right? They didn't draft the wide receiver with their second pick that will threaten McLaurin as a wide receiver. Yeah, they, 100%. They drafted a, a running back, really. When I was yes. scouting my running backs and I asked everybody, you know, who's the the next, you know, after I was done with the first couple tiers of running back, I was asking people, who's the next running back I need to look at? And everyone was 
San Antonio Gibson, and, and then I went. I and love I'm like, Gibson. He's not a running back, but he's not a wide receiver. So I, I completely agree with you that uh, t- Terry McLaurin's a, a very big winner here. And I would say, you know, if you look at Gibson and them using him in the offense, they also signed what Peyton Barber this off season. They still have Adrian Peterson. They still have Bryce Love, and they still have Darius Geis at running back. Yes, that's there a five pack in recent, Washington. Yeah, there are recent rumors that they think AP might get the cut in this off season. After, yeah, they, didn't they just resign him? Yeah, they okay. did, but they won't hit. They it won't hit opening day, and all of those guys will still be on the roster. Okay, they just signed Peyton Barber, so they could cut. They could cut AP and go with. They could cut AP and Barber and move forward with the other guys. Okay, uh, the Green Bay Packers. They drafted some football players. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> biggest loser! Yeah, you want to know why Mike says that uh, Michael Gallup wasn't the biggest loser in the draft? Because is Aaron Rodgers the biggest loser? Yes, Aaron Rodgers is the biggest loser. He has had no help. Look, I'm I I'm I'm like soured on Aaron Rodgers over the last couple of years. I'm sick of his sourpuss face and his <laughs> you know whiny. You soured attitude. on his sour face. I have. He's he's made me pucker. And I how I, do you know the man doesn't just love warheads? Yeah, maybe uh, he's out there playing and he he's loves just always warheads. <laughs> But I I can't stand him, but I still have empathy and I feel bad for him because for the last four or five years, since Randall Cobb had that nice, you know, year two, they have got him no talent. And here they had all the chance in the world in the deepest wide receiver draft to go get him some help. And they're like, nah, we're getting your replacement and we're going to we're going to wait to get the help until after you're out of here. It was really good guy to replace Aaron Jones. Yeah, and you know, this is a new regime in Green Bay. This was not the regime that drafted Aaron Jones. This is not, um, you know, they inherited what McCarthy had. And for for whatever reason, despite being 13 and three, they are making moves that look more two, three years down the line than they did, you know, where they're at right now. Three sixth round picks, a fifth round pick, no weapons for Aaron Rodgers, a draft class that. You know, Al Borland, are you on the line right now? Can we page Al Borland? Yeah. Biggest Packers fan I know. How did you feel about what took place on draft day? I'm still not over it, man. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all right. Well, hey, let's let's get some positive vibes here. Winner, Alan Lazard. <laughs> let's go. That's that's true though. I mean that he played enough last year for me to say he's worthy of a glance. It. More often than not in the last five years, those glances have not paid off for the uh, speculative non-Devante sure. Adams wide receiver in Green Bay. And but the, Lazard the is talented enough to where I would be feeling better about him than I would um, you know, anybody else outside we of had, Adams. We had all the, the Aaron Rodgers hype last year of him saying that he wanted Alan Lazard on the field. The GM, when he was talking about why... They didn't draft a wide receiver, and in his defense is he started talking about the other players, and the first guy he mentioned was Alan Lazard. Like, Alan Lazard is the two for this team. Did they it's mention def- anybody else? I mean, he ran through the rest of the- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know. He was they- mentioned, yes, Devin S. Scrumptious. <laughs> it's so scrumptious. good that he's back. I think Kumaro got mentioned, too. Oh boy! Right, but my my point was simply Alan Lazard was the first man up, so he was top of mind. Yeah, top of mind. I I would I I don't inherently give him the the number two role. I mean, I I don't really at this point I've stopped caring about the number two role. Whether that's, it's that's fine, or you don't have to care about it. I'm just saying, like the last three years, D- Jason, this two. might be what you're referencing. In 2017, the wide receiver two for Aaron Rodgers was the th- wide receiver 39 in fantasy. Then it was the wide receiver 65 in 2018 with MBS. And then last year, Alan Lazard ended up in that role by de fact, uh, you know, by the end, wide receiver 68. They don't pass the ball a ton. They can win on the ground when they want to. It is probably, I, I'm going to lean on Jason's side there where you can always throw another Aaron Rodgers weapon into a game because you might get that Raiders game from week five or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. You might get Rodgers throwing five or six touchdowns. But it's not something you can bank on anymore, unfortunately. And you just correct. You have to move forward. Jay All Sternberger. Right. Sternberger could be a winner. Just throwing the name maybe, out. Maybe. Didn't they? I mean, they moved up for like a blocking tight end. Or not moved up, but they grabbed one in the third round. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm just saying weird, they didn't get any weird receiving draft, help. And Sternberger's a good receiver. Okay. And they lost Jimmy Graham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they lost him. <laughs> you just said they lost Jimmy Graham. That's yes, where they're they, receiving calls. Well, I mean, the targets are gonna gonna go to Sternberg. And you know he's who better than a, Jimmy Grant. You know who had a few picks? The Minnesota Vikings. Just a few. Hundred. Thanks, Stefan Diggs. <laughs> uh Justin Jefferson, their first pick overall, hoping not to repeat the mistakes of Treadwell past. The twenty second pick, Justin Jefferson out of LSU. We saw him in the national title game go absolutely wild. I think it's a great fit. Obviously, with Diggs leaving town, Jefferson has the opportunity to come in right away and make a rookie impact. You know, you can pick two or three receivers that you think have odds on favorite opportunities to put up fantasy numbers in year one. Jefferson's one for me. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, His situation is is great. He is a winner. And then you you can uh, certainly say that Kirk Cousins is a winner grabbing, uh, you know, a high quality wide receiver in the first round to replace Diggs. Do you like you like Jefferson, right, Mike? Yeah, I like Justin Jefferson a lot. All right, I'm laughing because I'm scrolling down to the Bears here, and I'm I'm looking at this Bears draft, and I am looking at the winners and losers box, and I am seeing <laughs> Clancy, Clancy Barone. You're the big winner. Well, Who's Clancy Andy, Barone? Who is that? Well, Mike, I'm glad you asked. Clancy Barone is the most lucrative tight ends coach <laughs> in the National Football <laughs> League. Uh, the Bears have drafted another tight end. They had, what, a very limited amount of picks, seven picks in this draft. Um, not very limited, but two seconds, three-fifths, two-sevenths. They used their first overall pick on my favorite tight end of the tight end class, Cole Komet out of Notre Dame. But I believe that means they have 10 tight ends on that roster, Mike. That is uh, correct. Yeah, we got Cole Komet, Jimmy Graham, uh-huh, Demetrius uh-huh. Harris, uh, Ben Bronecker, Adam Sheen is still there. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. J.P. Holtz, uh, Jespe, or Jesper Horstead, and then like a f- there's still a few more that I'm not going to name. Does Clancy need an assistant is what I want to know. Does he need a little <laughs> bit of help? Do we need two tight end coaches in, in, in Chicago? What are they doing? What are they doing? That's, they a, that's a stay true to their board type of move to me. That they, they realize that they need help at tight end, and they are <laughs> taking what is referred to as the shotgun approach. Well, <laughs> if we were to go out and get 10 tight ends, two of them got to be good, right? Yeah, I mean, between the fact that rookie tight ends don't generally contribute for fantasy and the fact they have, that Cole Kamez has to beat out nine others, I, I wouldn't be banking on a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I mean, David Montgomery is a winner. Yes. yes. David yes. Montgomery is going to be my most annoying accidental recommendation of the year because I don't want to recommend him because of how difficult it was the definition of tough sledding last year for David Montgomery, but he's the guy and he was a high draft capital pick. They don't have Jordan Howard. They don't have a comp, a competitive other option to David Montgomery. He can catch the football and Nick Foles might be leading this offense. So there's not I, very. There will not be many running backs in the who what uh, fifth, sixth round that are gonna carry the ball two hundred plus times. Like, it, yeah, this and he's is, that's one the, of them. It's a jagged little pill, and you're just gonna <laughs> choke it down. Get, get some sugar and help the medicine go down because he's gonna get touches, man. Yeah, he'll he'll almost certainly outperform where the expectation is. He's gonna be drafted this. Oh year. my gosh, are we gonna are we gonna consider him as a sleeper in the UDK? I don't know that he would be sleeper. I'm just watching your value. faces right now. I want to. I don't see. like it. I don't want it. But there's there's always players. Who value. Value. I don't. Can I get you in the value train? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah. We'll see. This is my coping mechanism for losing Mixon because in that league, because oh, I lost yeah, he's Mixon, on your team, right? I ended up with yeah. Montgomery, and I'm now painting the. I did choose David Montgomery over Devin Singletary. For those out there, who you know, mm. I made that decision on volume. I made that decision I, on... I it, just statted out Devin Singletary, and I was surprised at how high the volume is that I'm projecting for him. Well, thanks for telling me that ahead of time, Mike. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding on to that info for a week. Oh, man. No. That makes sense. <laughs> no, I did go Montgomery over Singletary because I felt like uh, I would, like you said, 200-plus carries. Very talented pass catcher. If you saw the flashes that he had last year, there were few and far between... 
A lot of them in the passing game, so I went that direction. The Detroit Lions. Are we retiring this drop, Jason? Is yeah, this we your, don't need to carry on anymore with that. That's uh, it's that's over. Right? I don't know. Yes, I mean, I is, he a, is he a my guy for you this year? He is probably <laughs> going to be a my guy. Carry on out of town. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I could see DeAndre carry Swift on still, running back to the Lions. I could see carry on. I mean, of course, you're going to know this is coming from me, but I still think he could have a, a, a career for a different team in the future. He's so young. I mean, it was like it reminds me of the, when the Cardinals back in the day used to draft great running backs and they sucked and then they would leave and go sign somewhere else, you know, and, and they'd be great, whether it's Garrison Hurst or, or that hasn't uh, exactly or, uh, happened with Detroit, Thomas. though. You've got Amir Abdullah in your. Mm. Yeah, mm. no, Do certainly, I? certainly. Could, but I mean, DeAndre Swift. Uh, a lot of people's number one, your Andy, my, number one running back gets selected here with great draft capital. He's the third pick in the second round. Uh, early I don't pick. think he's a winner, though. He's not a winner no, for me. No They're way. Already, they, like, the, the, the chatter is talking about how DeAndre Swift is a good compliment to carry on. Yeah, Johnson. they're both going to the get the coaching staff is talking about. I, so let, let me uh, – sorry to sidetrack you, but – uh, if you guys r recall, I traded Odell Beckham or for Odell Beckham in Dynasty right before the, the NFL draft yes, and the rookie yes. draft. So now there are names in our draft to associate to that trade. So let me oh, yeah. give you the names and see now how we, we feel about that. I traded the 105 and the 201 for Beckham. In our draft, that turned into DeAndre Swift, and then I probably would have been looking at uh, Mims or Pittman. So, or my, and that's Denzel Mims, wide receiver for the Jets. Michael Pittman, wide receiver for the Colts. So I, let's, I would, let's say I would, Swift and Pittman for Odell Beckham. How do we feel about it now? I think it's a completely fair trade, and I would I would go with Odell Beckham. Uh, you know, I think the landing Andy, spot. you were you were more on the pick side. So now that you're seeing the names and locations, are you still the going with the 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 rookies? I'm not shooting for middle of the road with this answer, but the truth is it's just team need. I mean, if you were in that situation okay. where you didn't have a lot of depth, you you are building for the future, Swift and Mims, I'd rather have those two guys if I'm looking two or three years down the road, but Beckham is the better player right now for your fantasy team. And Jason, I I have if I had to put money down on Swift or carry on having a better fantasy season. I wouldn't know where to put it, but I'd probably put it on carry on. That doesn't equate to a good fantasy season. Don't get me wrong, but better, more fantasy points, I'd probably put it on carry on Johnson. Well, that's weird and great to hear. I mean, I, I would put <laughs> uh, I would put it on Swift. I think that he's going to come in and, and supplant carry on, but I it's not going to be a one-man show there. And this is a team that hasn't been able to find success since Barry Sanders at running the ball. Do uh, you think that he's more talented than carry on? Yeah, yeah, I, th okay. I think I think uh, Swift is more talented than than Carry On coming in. People are going to draft Swift like he has the job already. Yeah, like, so that's Swift not... will be up in the fourth round. But at yeah. least, yeah, Carry On's a, a gigantic, gigantic. Uh, you know, one of the biggest losers in the from the NFL draft this year because he they could have come away like some of the other teams like Miles Sanders, where it's like you didn't draft a running back and you're giving him the job one more time. He, he's not going to get another chance to be the workhorse. All right. The New Orleans Saints, NFC South, only had four picks in this draft. There's not a whole lot to say. <laughs> There's not a big winner or loser out of this draft, right? I mean, four picks. First rounder was a center, which I think surprised some people. And then no one of great note. So probably move on. The Trout man, yeah. but yeah, no, it's it's irrelevant right now. He's he's in, yeah, he's interesting in your dynasty drafts, but not for this year. And you really didn't have a major impact uh, with the Atlanta Falcons draft board either. You could say Todd Gurley was a winner, signed his deal sure. with Atlanta, and they did not invest in another running back with their seven picks. But outside of Gurley, any big thoughts here with Atlanta? Uh, you, you could you could say the same thing for Calvin Ridley. You have mm -hmm. uh, an immense amount of lost targets here. I, th I think they lead the league in vacated targets with uh, Hooper leaving, uh, with Sanu leaving midseason, and and so 
yeah, those two guys, Ridley and Gurley, I think are going to have a lot of opportunity this year. And then uh, two more teams to get through here. Carolina, we'll go to them first. Carolina did not invest in skill position players either. They were some. They were a team we thought might go Isaiah Simmons in the first round. They didn't. Uh, they went a defensive tackle, Derek Brown. You, you kind of know what you got on offense yep. with Carolina, yep. in the sense that you know their their actual depth chart. You don't yet know how that's going to be carried out on the field with Bridgewater and Robbie Anderson joining uh, DJ Moore and. The ever rumored to be traded Curtis Samuel <laughs> every moment of every day yeah. seems like, but here we are with that depth chart and no real impact based on the draft. Yeah. I mean, you, you have a clear idea of what the Panthers needed help with and it was their defense. <laughs> every, every single pick was a defensive pick in this year's draft. There were so many rumors about all oh, the, the Panthers are, they're bringing in all these running backs and that's the process, true. And it didn't happen. They paid Christian McCaffrey a ton of money and then they didn't draft a single offensive player. And they said, yeah, let's, let's go CMC. Yeah, I, that's a good point. I thought that they might invest based on the rumors. We heard fourth, fifth, sixth round running back just for insurance. And they did not, they did sign an undrafted uh, running back, I think. Meh. And then Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers, uh, good discussions to be had here. They went with Keyshawn Vaughn in the third round. Mm. I know mm. that yeah. uh, we mm. have a couple of Keyshawn Vaughn fans in the yes. their own respective Guilty buildings. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Tom Brady's a winner. Uh, Tristan Wirfs in the first round. Get him some protection. Keyshawn Vaughn in the third makes Ronald Jones a loser in this draft. Ish. So yeah, loser ish. Loser -ish. Yeah, I still think he's the starting running back for this team. But um as we've seen from Bruce Arians on multiple franchises, including last year with Barber and Ronald Jones, he has a temperamental running back depth chart adjuster. When, that's what I'm <laughs> that's what I'm titling him. When Put Arians on a shirt. was talking yeah. about, you know, all these college guys, they, you know, they all have good production on the ground, but can they catch? But can they yeah. catch? That's what he cares about. That's what they were looking for. Um, my my comp for uh, Keyshawn Vaughn was Carry On Johnson. He reminded me a lot of him coming out. I was a big fan of the Keyshawn talent. would like you to select a new comp. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Look, I still believe in the talent of Carry On Johnson. Uh, he's looked good when given the opportunity. He hasn't been able to stay on the field. But the point here is uh, this is a guy that I thought was a much better talent than the opportunity he was going to receive. Because he was a late transfer um, uh, from Vanderbilt. Yep. Um, and uh, so, you know, he ended up in a spot where there's a path to, I mean, I'm not afraid of Ronald Jones, especially when they need Tom Brady to have someone to catch the ball. And that's always been a weakness of Ronald Jones. And Keyshawn Vaughn, uh, it, you know, over his career showed that he he can he can catch the ball. It's, One of the things it's a that perfect was I'll jump ahead, in. Mike. It's it, it's a perfect match. The landing space or landing spot for Vaughn is incredible. I said loser ish to Ronald Jones because of Bruce Arians not wanting to put his rookies out there right away. So we need it will be very tough to kind of pump the brakes on your hopes and expectations for Vaughn early on in the season. Like long term, I like Keyshawn Vaughn a lot. Like he's a first round rookie pick to me. At what's it's sort of funny. Jason had him comp to carry on Johnson. I had messaged Jason and I said, like, I like Keyshawn Vaughn the way I liked Alexander Madison last year, where it it feels like he's just a super solid, well rounded player, but I don't know where he'll be drafted. Ends up getting drafted in the exact same round as Madison. So long term, I like Vaughn. Second half of the season it could happen for Vaughn. I mean, there is the chance that it happens earlier than 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 later where Vaughn turns into a, a James White outlet for Tom Brady, but it it, it could be sketchy to start the season. There, that's how I'm projecting it. Yeah, I mean if 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 you had to bet on it, you know, Ronald Jones is going to get first and second down work to start this season. And last year when you were dealing with Ronald Jones Peyton Barber decisions, you still had to deal with Dare Agumba Wale well, yeah. coming out for every freaking third down for that offense. That could the be Vaughn now. The point in Vaughn's favor is certainly the fact that, look, Arians didn't didn't pick Ronald Jones. He didn't pick Peyton Barber to be, a, be his running back. So this is his first investment in a player. You compound that with the rookie and, you know, look, you come in on third down, you're going to have to pass protect for Tom Brady. If a rookie comes in and Tom Brady gets popped, you might yeah, not see out. Keyshawn Vaughn for three weeks. Right. So that's going to be the thing to wade through. 
But dynasty leagues, I know you guys believe in the talent. He's an mm-hmm. Arians guy. So there's a lot of upside there for Keyshawn Vaughn. You just might there have to wait for it. There was a running back that Arians drafted in the third round a couple years ago. <laughs> You're talking about David Johnson. I am talking about David Johnson. So Keyshawn Vaughn will be returning kicks for his rookie year is what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if he's fast <laughs> enough for that. Because <laughs> that's what David Johnson didn't get to do a whole lot more than that in year one. Yeah, uh, but that was behind that was behind a great running back versus Ronald Jones. That was behind Chris Johnson, the retread. Yes, that was and Chris, Andre Ellington. Chris oh, Johnson gosh. was an you, you excellent running back. You, Are you, you talking about like comp- Titans, Chris Johnson? I, I'm I, well. Chris that, Johnson that's for the world. Cardinals was Arizona not qualified. Cardinals, is great. At Arizona Cardinals, Chris Johnson versus Ronald is that a Jones. Handle? I will take Arizona <laughs> Cardinals uh, Johnson a hundred out of a hundred times. Okay. All, All right. right. We'll, we'll agree to disagree with the. Upward movement of Keyshawn Vaughn to start the year, Jason. But uh, I think that's it. You guys have anything else you want to close out with? Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knows w- what time it's going to be when we uh, when we come back for our next uh, episode. Andy. Oh, my gosh. The month of April is it's uh, rapidly oh. closing. It's be May. <laughs> yes. I didn't intentionally forget that, Jason. I'm, uh-huh. glad, you rem- I'm glad you remembered it, though. It's no longer April. Here for the people. It's going to be May. All right, you got two of them. So <laughs> that is it, Foot Clan. Thank you for stopping by, tuning in, supporting the show. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, next week, we're going to have a pretty exciting Dynasty show. Oh, okay. Thank you for Goodbye. listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget to check out pristineauction.com. Uh, Mike, have you been there? Have you visited pristineauction.com? Uh, yeah, a few times. You might look in my yeah, uh, just YouTube at- video here. I got Larry <laughs> Fitz signed on the wall. Yeah, hundreds of daily auctions. Hundreds of autographed NFL gear, your favorite players, your favorite teams, the best deals, oftentimes cheaper than you could buy their jersey in the store, but you get it autographed and you get it straight to you from pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you head over to pristineauction.com to get a $10 credit, and uh, that'll help you. It'll help us, pristineauction.com.